So today, a slight departure from our normal Trove News videos. Uh, we are having a reaction, a reaction to breaking news today. Um, we haven't really got much time to make this one. Uh, I'm due to be uh, travelling down to London to the uh, the GESGB, the Africa Conference, two days, Wednesday and Thursday this week, September the 20th, 21st. Going to be going along to that. Uh, lots of interesting things happening in Africa, but today's news uh, has really shocked the industry and taken... Uh, the market's by surprise. That's the merger, proposed merger, of PGS and TGS. Now, what can we say about that? Well, PGS, um, to start with, yeah, a fantastic company over the years, uh, um, bought many innovations. Uh, the Geostreamer technology has been fantastic. Uh, superb broadband acquisition. 10 on 10 for that. Um, they've also uh, they've also good at processing um, with the boats. They do the uh, OBN or the uh, ocean bottom nodes, the, the, the fixed nodes um, for 4D type uh, uh, development studies, to watching where oil and gas has moved over time in the subsurface. Uh, PGS, uh, yeah, well-established, fantastic Norwegian company. Um, yeah, based in or headquartered in, uh, in Oslo. And of course, uh, TGS. Well, what can we say about TGS? Well, uh, whereas uh, PGS have the uh, have the boats and they go out uh, acquiring, they've got a fleet of vessels. TGS never had them. Um, what they do is they do these large multi clients. Um, they uh, perhaps uh, I've heard feedback from others that the um, the processing perhaps not as good as uh, as others. Um, they did acquire a uh, Geophysical um, a few years ago, uh, and with them got the software and uh, some of the uh, expertise and certainly uh, uh, hope and improvement uh, in, in process processing has come along. But it's this multi client this this library of data of all these acquisitions uh, just right across the planet, really. Now, between these two companies, they've got a massive amount of, uh, of data, historic data. The world has been shot pretty much right over for, for most um, 3D surveys. A lot of it's covered, if not their 2D in very, very good quality. So we can really image a lot of the continental shelves. And uh, between these two companies, they've now got control of, of all that past information. Now, um, if we look at other companies in the sector, well, we've got, of course, uh, CGG. Um, they're in the multi-client business as well. Um, now, you know, it's got to be bad news for CGG. Their uh, their multi-client library is going to be dwarfed by the combined PGS TGS library. You would expect. So, uh, is the you know merger with uh, SLB? Uh, is it really likely that? Um, well, we come on to the acquisition companies that uh, that are still out there and uh, what might be going. Well, let's talk about them now. Shearwater. I mean, you know, they've merged with uh, with Dolphin. Um, their reveal great software. Um, they probably need to to merge with CGG, and then at least you have, you know, some competition for the oil and gas companies. Well, you know, really, all competition may have gone out of the uh, the market. Polarcus, they've gone to the wall. Uh, Reborn again as a, another Norwegian market. Somebody can put what the name of that company is. I, I haven't been able to research it. We're on a bit of a time squeeze today. Um, but yeah, the um, so the only thing is that uh, we, we maybe don't need to go out and acquire as much data, um, but we do need to um, certainly keep on reprocessing old data. And, and now these two companies have got all of this data sort of locked up, certainly in the UK. Um, there still hasn't been any multi-client data put into the uh, National Data Repository. Now, perhaps a condition of uh, this merger could be that uh, any, any data older than 10 years should be released into these national data repositories. I don't know if uh, there are many requirements to release data in other countries uh, around the globe, um, but you know, number of these uh, number of these countries, uh, you know, in Africa, in Latin America, in in the Mediterranean, and elsewhere, you know, they have signed ex ex uh, exclusivity deals um, for TGS or PGS. Um, typically to, uh, to to market and, and carry out all of their geoscience information. So they really have got into uh, perhaps contracts that will be 
would be difficult to uh, to, to alter. And, and on the face of it, you think, well, maybe they're getting some of the money and benefit from TGS PGS deals. But you know, you'll get a lot more money from uh, getting an oil field up and running and uh, delivering taxes to uh, the treasuries rather than just getting the odd one or two million from uh, a seismic company. But the short term sometimes overweighs the others. I'm concerned, and people I've spoken to today are concerned, well, what's going to happen with uh, research and development? I mean, it probably hasn't really gone forward at quite the pace in the last um, 10 years as it did uh, previously. Um, so what's happening to R&D? Who's going to be doing it? I mean, there is there is there the same incentive? Yes, we understand things have been hard for both TGS and for PGS, and, and perhaps this is sort of, you know, a rescue package that they need to do, but it's going to have huge implications and repercussions throughout the oil and gas business, but not only the oil and gas business, the renewables business as well, which is kind of in its infancy. And uh, we'll come back and talk about that a little bit more. Now, when the, uh, and I haven't had a chance to watch all of the, the webcasts, but the bits I've seen talking about 50 million in synergies, you know, savings that can be made in a year. And they're saying that that's a very conservative number. Well, yeah, we know what that means. I mean, that's going to be employees. That's going to be redundancies. That's going to be rationalization, downsizing. Offices are going to close. Is it going to mean a major retrenching to Norway and closing some of the over overseas offices? Well, time will tell. But, uh, you know, um, you heard it here first. This is one of our concerns. Now, you know, there has been comments uh, recently that, you know, in 10 years time, there won't be any need for seismic acquisition. Yes, reprocessing because the maths keeps improving, uh, new techniques and, uh, you know, the computational power means that you can do an awful lot with old data and, and actually improve the quality of it. But will there be a need to shoot more data? You don't really gain huge benefits from overshooting 3Ds. We have tried that for a number of decades now in the North Sea and, and, and yeah, notwithstanding 4D, certainly useful when you're talking about uh, field developments and, and actually looking for infill infill drilling locations. Um, but then renewables, what's going to happen there? Well, we've got companies like Fugro. You know, they, uh, they're they doing an awful lot to help the offshore uh, wind effort right now. They're doing lots of uh, cable surveys and shallow um, foundation type surveys. Um, and, and uh, you know, you, but you don't need huge, great uh, seismic vessels to, to do that. And you don't need the uh, sort of the, the reprocessing capability um, that PGS, TGS, and for that matter, CGG, um, you know, w would do. It's very, very shallow data. It's spark a survey type stuff, very high frequency. So, well, where are we up to? The Norwegian authorities, presumably, there's been chats and uh, they're probably already on board. They're not going to stand in the way. They've they've bailed out uh, these companies in the past and and probably just uh, just happy to see that uh, well they're going to retain one potentially large Norwegian um, seismic company, which uh, you know will have a dominant position in the uh, the marketplace. But is the world being held ransom by uh, these multi client uh, libraries? Um, and we're not just talking companies, we're talking countries. Is a condition of the uh, the merger that um, perhaps some of this data is released, but is that where the value of this deal is at the end of the day? So it is a tough one. Now, what the uh, the shareholders of PGS and TGS are going to make of it, what they're going to uh, going to gain from this, um, well, time will tell, but. Uh, it is a major news story, and this is just an initial reaction. I think what we'll try and do is we'll try and come back with a, um, a more thorough analysis, uh, perhaps in the future. Uh, so stay tuned, watch our channels, and we've got many, many videos. And guess what? We feature quite a lot of PGS and TGS lines in some of those. Anyway, take care. See you back on our channel before too long. Bye for now.